All right, we're joined now from San Jose, California by Tim Beharin, president of Creative Strategies, an analysis and strategy company that specializes in technology. Mr. Beharin, welcome to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. Glad to be with you. Sir, how important is Steve Jobs to Apple? Is he irreplaceable? Well, he's irreplaceable, in the, especially as a spokesman. You know, he is legendary. And when he takes the uh, podium to announce a new product, he uh, exudes not only that legendary position, but the fact that he's a visionary. That part would be hard to replace. On the other hand, um, he has put together this an amazing deep bench of great management team who are the guys that are actually helping put together the products and more importantly getting them to market and selling them. And in that context, Steve will be the first to tell you that, you know, this is not a one-man company anymore. Apple's gotten so big with so much success right. that it takes, you know, hundreds and if not thousands of people to make Apple successful. In 2004, Mr. Jobs took a leave of absence for cancer surgery, and in 2009, he took a leave for a liver transplant. How did the company perform during those absences, and how will it perform now? Well, in both cases, it actually did really well. It, of course, un, during the first time, it stabilized, and during the second time, it actually grew. And during that period, they introduced you new know, versions of the iPhone and uh, iPods. Um, my sense is that it'll be the same thing here. If we look at the short term, um, there won't be any impact. Keep in mind, Apple doesn't just create a product overnight. Right. The products that we're going to see this year and even next year and into 2013 have been on the drawing boards for at least two years. Right, good point. And they're just coming through the cycle. Uh, during Jobs' absence in 2009, the Securities and Exchange Commission investigated statements about his health reportedly to ensure that investors weren't misled. Can we expect a similar investigation this time? Um, well, you know, I mean, the problem is we just don't know enough about what's happening, and, and I guess there's enough questions that, that could drive that. But, you know, Jobs has asked for uh, a level of privacy, and more importantly, he says, look, the, 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 the company's going to be in the hands of Tim and the team, and I will be in touch with them right. constantly. That's what he said. And, you know, basically there will be no major decision made on product design or business decisions without Steve's approval even during this period. Yeah. So, you know, things really are, believe it or not, probably going to be uh, pretty normal. We were talking about sure. Steve Jobs, the announcement yesterday that he is taking yet another leave of absence. Uh, was that disclosure yesterday enough to calm investors' concerns? Well, yes and no. I mean, I, the, the one thing that this an announcement yesterday had that was different than the last time is that this one did not say when he would come back. When he did this the last time, he said he would come back, I think it was in June, uh, which was about four or five months after he made that statement. This time it just says, I hope to be back. That obviously leaves an open-ended question. Now, having said that, he goes on to point out that he's put the company in the hands of Tim Cook and right. the management team, and he fully trusts their ability to carry the company forward. Uh, how then do you weigh investors' right to know versus Steve Jobs' right to privacy about his medical condition, a right I would imagine everyone except a sitting president of the United States has? Yeah, it, it's a tough question. Um, when you have a company that is worth this kind of money, uh, that's a legitimate question. But at the same time, um, I think one of the bigger issues you have to look at is does the team that is in place, can they actually carry the ball even if Steve is gone for, say, a period of time? Right. And I think that that's what Apple is l leveraging is the fact that, number one, Steve will continue to be in touch. He'll, and knowing Steve, he'll talk to these guys every day even though he's maybe not on the campus, mm -hmm. um, but he's trusting the team to actually you know, deliver on all the execution. Well, Mr. Beharin, let me talk about Apple's board of directors. What's its responsibility to investors in a situation like this? Well, they all, I mean, all of these guys have fiduciary responsibility to guide the company and to direct it and obviously live within all of the SEC rules. Uh, on this issue of disclosure of uh, the, the uh, CEO's illness, you know, that's not quite as, as, dis, as, as clear uh, as it might be when you have, for example, the President of the United States. Um, they will come under pressure, I would assume, to be more uh, uh, forthcoming on this. 
But again, that is something between Steve and the board, and they're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. You know, unless there is some kind of legal challenge, and you never know what happens there. Uh, this is going to be the third go round for Chief Operating Officer Tim Cook to run Apple. During his most recent time <laughs> as the interim CEO, Apple stock rose over 60%. No questions in your mind that Tim Cook is the right man for the job? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting, and, I, you know, I've heard this idea bandered around that, you know, they probably could, should be out looking for a new CEO from outside, and, and I, that's kind of absurd. Why Apple do you is say a that? Unique, well, because Apple's a unique company. They, they march by their own drumbeat. They have their own culture. And, and keep in mind, the last time they brought guys from the outside, it didn't turn out quite as well. What, what has to be, I think, kept in, in focus is that whoever does keep company keep the company moving forward mm -hmm. it's got to be somebody who lives and breathes apple who understands steve's way of thinking who you know has the trust of the ex of the entire executive management team yeah and at that at this stage the only person i see that can take that role is tim cook well you told the new york times that you were with cook last week here in new york and that you walked away thinking quoting here this guy is more in charge and more in control of apple than i think people understand what did you mean by that well you know I've talked to Tim off and off and on and one of the things that, that struck me he was uh, you know uh, uh, at the Verizon announcement and he was on stage explaining the uh, the relationship with Verizon and all of that if you actually watch the video of that you'll see that he was as smooth and as comp uh, 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 um, comprehensive as Steve is in similar situations. Mm. He was very clear in how he communicated and answered the questions. And more importantly, I thought he represented Apple in a, with a very, very strong level of understanding and, and, and direction. Right. And I think in that context, that along with my discussion when we were, he was explaining to me you know, not only the business relationship, but things that he saw happening in the market, I just walked away thinking, you know, this guy has a much greater grasp of the market and the opportunities, Miss as well as Apple. Mr. Beharin, then in our last 30 seconds, would you be able to tell us some of what Mr. Cook told you he saw happening in the market? Well, he saw that, what he said was that this whole area of smartphones and this whole issue of, you know, using the internet to connect on mobile devices is only going to explode. And that yeah. Apple was clearly in a, in a very strong position to deliver yeah. not only the current version of the iPhone, but others that would really take advantage of expanding the mobile computing experience. Yeah. All right, Tim Beharin, president of Creative Strategies, joining us live from California. Sir, thanks for your perspective. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you.